All right, open your eyes. Is that cool? Is that perfect for this room? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's go. Outstanding. Let's go. So if you're ready, say I'm ready. I'm ready. So if you're ready, say I'm ready. I'm ready. All right. Part of what I'm going to share with you will be for everybody. And part of what I'm going to share with you is just going to be for you. That you have the option of sharing it with others later on. So here's the first part of that. In your mind, or you can hide it in a little piece of a note, I want you to write down on a scale of 0 to 10, with 10 being the highest. There's no 11s. There's no 12s. 10 is the absolute highest. I want you to think about the peak of your excitement in your profession. Maybe it was when you got your first client, or your first paycheck, or your first big deal, or your first breakthrough, or when you decided, when you got certified, there, there was a time where your excitement, not necessarily the money in the bank yet, right? But your excitement, maybe you help somebody make a, have a transformation in their life, maybe even save their life. You're, you're remembering that moment, right? I want you to think about that moment, and let's just gauge that there's still space between there and what a 10 really is, but I want you to think about that moment, all right? Like the, the highest time of however long your journey has been so far, that's the peak of where you've been so far. All right? Everybody tracking so far? And honesty time. This is the moment of really time. You don't have to share this with anybody else. I want you to share during this last year where you might, where your baseline might have been. Just kind of think of that in there. Don't have to answer out loud. Does it make sense what I'm asking you? There was a time where you were sky high, still had places to grow, but this was the highest you've ever been doing what you're doing. Then, these past 12, 13, 18 months, you've had some moments. Where are you right now? Don't answer out loud. Where are you right now? Okay, so that's just kind of a baseline. Somebody with their phone, pull up a calculator. Anybody, just one person. Whoever does it first, you, you win. Okay. All right. We're gonna go around the room, and all I want you to give me is the number of years you've been doing what you've been doing. Just the number of years. However your definition of this. Could be your profession, could be whatever your purpose or whatever it is, just how many years have you been doing? All right? So for me, we'll say, interesting, how am I gonna put this? Yes. We'll say 17. 17 years, full-time entrepreneur. Okay. But we're however you want. How many years? This is what you want to add up. How many years? Are we adding yours in it? Sure. Okay. How many? Nine. Four. Two. Fourteen. One. Three. Ten. Twenty. Ten. Seven. I had to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like adding all the numbers. <laughs> okay. How many? Nineteen. Nineteen? Twelve. Twenty-two. Ten. Twenty-one. Twelve. Can't decide. Doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, Pick a number. Okay. Uh, Fifteen. What's the number? 205. 205. Do you understand what that means? One of the reasons why you're here, one of the reasons why you've been able to achieve what you've been able to achieve is, yes, you've done most of the heavy lifting by yourself, but you've been part of a team, right? And being part of a team, who's ever heard of Napoleon Hill Thinking Grow Rich? Cool. Most of you haven't. Napoleon Hill Thinking Grow Rich, probably the most popular personal development book of all time. Second, third most published book in history, but don't worry about that. <laughs> <clears throat> There's something called a mastermind. Whether you knew it or not, you were part of a mastermind. You were part of a team. And what was that number again? 250? 205. 205. If you choose to do so, you can rely on your own experience, your own skills, your own abilities, your own resources, or you can take advantage of your team, your all, we call it all of your strength. So when you leverage your friends and your business partners, even if you're not in the same room very often, you're part of this group and you have the opportunity to take advantage of all of that. Probably wasn't going to share this at the very end, but here's, here's the point. There's a story. And 
I'm not sure if we start 20 minutes early, it means I have 20 minutes extra. But somebody <laughs> needs to, when, when we get 10 minutes, 15 minutes before the end, I got it. start throwing something at me, okay? okay. Because it could be 3 o'clock and you'll say, uh, Steven, <laughs> so you're my timer, all right? Yeah. <laughs> There's a story of a man and his young son. And this is one of those relationships that a father has with a son that every father, I have a son who's almost 30, he'll be 30 this week, believe it or not, um, would want to have. And the son worships his father. The father is his hero. And he teaches him things from time to time, as you can imagine. And the, the father, they live out in the country somewhere, not as beautiful as this, but the country somewhere. And he wakes the sun up early in the morning before it even is the sun, the sun comes up. It's dark. And the sun's groggy. It's like, what do you, what, what father? Says, Get up, son. Time for another lesson. Yes, father. And he gets him out of bed. They start walking down this long path, nothing much, like a mountain in the background, whatever. And he's talking, and the sun's rubbing his eyes. And he, what, he, didn't, he learned not to ask silly questions. So he's just walking. He knows that his father will ultimately t teach him what the purpose of this experiment or whatever this is. So you're walking, walking, walking. He says, son, you've always been a B. You've always been a good son. You've always been awesome. And you've always listened to my instructions. And today's lesson is more important than any lesson I've ever given you. All I want you to do is listen to what I tell you to do. And I want you to do it. Do you understand? Yes, father. And they're walking, they're walking. And all of a sudden, the son sees this kind of hill out in the distance. And it's coming into light. He doesn't realize what's going on. He's just walking on and he sees that there's this huge cart at the bottom of the hill. And it's like, that's interesting, but it's huge. And the closer you get, the bigger it gets, right? And he's walking up and said, son, I'm going to ask you to do something that you don't think you can do. But I believe in you. I know that you can do it. Do you understand, son? Yes, father. They get up to the cart. The cart is multiple times the size of the boy. He's like a little boy like this. And he said, son, I want you to use all of your strength and push this cart up the hill. But fathers, son, listen to me. I want you to use all of your strength and push this cart up the hill. Do you understand? Yes, father. So the son gets under, under, behind the cart. He starts pushing. It's not going to move. It is multiple times his size, multiple times his weight, and he's pushing, but in his mind, he's all confused. I wonder what's going on. Why, why is he asking me to do this? He knows I can't do this. And he starts letting his... Emotions get in contact, you know, past what he's thinking. So he says, but Father, too, don't push. You can do it, son. I believe in you. Just use all of your strength. And he's pushing, and his, his body's starting to ache, and his legs are starting to tremble. And he's, he eventually falls, falls like, exhausted onto the ground. And he knows that now is the moment that he's going to be able to learn the lesson of whatever this is all about. Because he knows that he did what his father told him to do, and it didn't work, so okay, here's the lesson. And the father looked down at the son and he said, son, I've never been so disappointed in my entire life. I gave you one instruction, and all you had to do was follow it. And you, but father, you saw that I gave it all away. But father, you said, what did I tell you to do? He said, you told me to use all of, your, all of my strength. And the father said, did you? He said, yes, Father. The Father said, you never asked for my help. So why do I share that with you? You're part of a team. You're part of a family. All I needed to know, outside of my good friend Marine Toretto's recommendation that this is a group of amazing people led by amazing servant leaders, was to see the first five seconds of the kickoff today where one of your fellow leaders got so emotional of what you've been got through together and what's getting ready to happen in every single person's life. That's all I need to know about this group of people and the people who you are allowing to lead you, but you're all going through this thing together. So that was a long introduction I didn't even plan on using, but use all of your strength, okay? Or, Feel free to do it all on your own. How did it go for those companies and for those businesses and those other salons and those other trainers 
those people who did it on their own. Where are they now? Institutions. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, this is, this is a cheat sheet. I've had conversations with, with the, Megan twist, the Megan twins, as I call them. <laughs> I, I've had my, my conversations with Amy. Don't ask me to pick anybody out because my head's spinning. I met so many amazing people, even I wrote down, you know, who's sitting where. So we're not going to be able to cover all of this, but this is just what came to mind as I was having my conversations and going over my notes and just feeling what could this group of outstanding individuals who've been through so much and who are now at the very beginning of something. So many people went through what they went through and they said, uh-oh, here it is, beginning and the end, here it comes. And that's what happened to them because that's what they were thinking. Whereas you have some other people says, cool, this is the end of the beginning. Now it's really gonna get exciting. All right, so once again, if you're ready, Sam, ready? Ready, ready. 205 years of experience. That's pretty cool. I really shouldn't be doing much talking. I should be asking and having people share, but that will be kind of over, over the, the rest of the time we have together. I'm very fortunate to have a couple of mentors. And one mentor invited me to a training, private training of a small group of leaders and when I arrived at the training, which took some effort, by the way, I had to get on a plane. I had to reserve a hotel. I had to get transportation from where I was going to where he said I should be at a certain time. And I only had a few days notice. He just said, come here. I said, okay, and did everything I needed to do to make that happen. And I arrived, and the first word out of his mouth was, hey, Stephen, why are you here? <laughs> Um, excuse me? <laughs> Almost like he was surprised to see me. <laughs> hey, Steve, uh, why are you here? Uh, this, this is the, 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 the place and time that you told me to come. Remember you called me early in the morning because we're different time zones, and he called me. And he said, yeah, I, I, I get that. But why are you here? Uh, because you invited me, sir. No, I'm, why are you here? And he kept asking me that question over and over and over again before I was, my head was spinning. I was confused, maybe as much as that little kid, right? He said, what's the purpose of your life? Why are you here? What must you do before you leave whatever this is in the physical and go off to wherever we're all going? At the time I was in my 40s, I'd never asked myself that question before. What is the purpose of your life? What is your true passion? I knew I wasn't doing it yet. I could feel that much. I knew I hadn't discovered it yet because I wasn't even looking. But he asked me that. Now, some of you, and I'm not sure if we have enough relationships left for me to ask you to raise your hand and ask that question, but just. Thinking in your mind, some of you are thinking, well, that's a good question. I've never thought about that before and don't feel bad because most people haven't. But it's nice to know why you're here. Because once you know why you're here, then you can get it on going where you're supposed to go, right? So I have a feeling that many of you are already on your path to that destination. You might not have been able to really hone in on it and be able to articulate it yet. And that's one of the reasons why some people may be up to this point, it's been kind of a one person army type of a thing. Why in the world did I write down bus drive? I saw many of you looking at this thing and <laughs> writing down, writing down, uh, taking pictures, all kind of good stuff. I don't know what most, you don't know what most of this means to me. But this one probably was, who, who saw the word bus driver and said, what is that? Can I see that? We're all bus drivers in one sense or another. Which means we, each and every one of us, by the nature of who we are and what we've chosen to do, or what has chosen us, 
have the ability to positively impact people's lives. True or false? Oh, yeah. Every single day. Whether we are physically doing it or not, actually doing it or not, just having a conversation. Just the fact. Is, was it really necessary for the host to walk to the corner and look for cars slowing down at the bottom of the driveway <laughs> and, and send the vibrations of, yes, this is it, turn up, read the sign and come up and wave and welcome walking down? Was it necessary? No, it wasn't necessary. That's just who some people are, right? So when, when, you're a, when you have the ability to positively impact someone's life, all we have to do is, and this is part of the afternoon session, is first of all, get on people's radar. Do they know who we are? Do they know we exist? Do they know how we've helped others, how we might be able to help them, and then get into some type of a dialogue or interaction so that we can have a conversation to see if they'll simply allow us to help them? Isn't that all that we do? Because being good at what we do, that just gets you in the door. That's just the ante to play the game. You've kind of figured out that being great at what you do doesn't really make the biggest difference in being successful as a business. You figure that out by now, right? It's not just being a great masseuse or a great hair person or a great business. You have to be able to actually have that conversation, get on people's radar, have them know about us and be thinking about us when they're ready to make a decision and then enter into some type of interaction, maybe get them to do a trial, whatever, or whatever, and then all of a sudden, okay, I will allow you to help me. Thanks, that's why we're here. So what does this mean, bus driver? We're just bus drivers going somewhere, taking people from one, one place to another. Would anybody get on a bus if they didn't know the destination? Would you get on a bus if you didn't know the destination? No, of course not. So we're bus drivers. We have to tell people where we're going, where we have the opportunity of taking them and giving them the opportunity to get on or not. But if we don't know where we're going, how can we tell somebody else where we're going? If we can't get on their radar and have them understand that this is just part of the journey, Get on, get off, if you, whatever you do is awesome, right? If you allow me to help you, awesome. If you choose not to do so, awesome. But my job, your job, is to get that message out there so that they can at least know that we exist and this is how we can help them. Now, will everybody ride on the bus to the, to the end destination? No. Some people will choose not to get on in the first place for whatever reason. They tell us they want to go to this destination. We're showing them that we've helped other people get there. We're on our way. We pull up and say, hey, come on. And guess what they say sometimes? No, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Has that confused anybody ever? <laughs> it confused me a lot. That's not our deal to figure out why they choose not to hop on the bus that's gonna take them to the destination they say they wanna to get to, that you've proven you've taken other people to before. If that doesn't, that's okay, don't worry about that. Our deal is just to show up. Understanding, some people get on, some people won't. Well, guess what, it's okay. Some people will get on, and we're starting in moving toward the destination. We can see it, it's getting closer. Wherever they were before is getting further and further background. And guess what some of them do? They get off. Okay. Maybe we didn't get to the destination they thought as quick as they thought we were going to go or they should get to or they thought it was going to be easier. They didn't realize they were going to have to drive the bus sometime, all that kind of good stuff. So what does this all have to do with this? What does it all have to do is we have to know where we're going and we have to be able to share with the world those, maybe our world of that score, maybe it's Main Street, maybe it's now that we've, we've put our toe in the water of, of virtual, you can do it anywhere. I've seen some very 
savvy entrepreneurs who've been able to learn and or leverage technology and they're doing this stuff in people in different countries. It's pretty exciting now that we've been able to leverage something we've done our entire career and now multiply it by technology, it's really gonna get exciting for people to take advantage of it. So that just means, it's just the mindset of a successful entrepreneur, understanding that whatever your purpose is, whatever your passion is, you know what you know, you know how you can help others, and it's not your, it's not your responsibility for them to decide or to get disappointed or frustrated or whatever on if they, those people choose not to hop on your bus at all. They choose to hop on early. Maybe they hop on and get off and they say, hey, I'll be back around, right? So that's, that's what this means. Does that help it all a little bit? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Hmm. Here's a good one. Okay. If I was to ask you, and I looked at your website, I've even hopped on some of your, your uh, Facebook pages. Because if you know one person and you know somebody else's name, you can go to their, their Facebook page and look on friends and do on search and you can see what they're doing. It's pretty cool. It's <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, but, but the cool part is whatever we put out there, it's out there and it's out there for a reason. And now I know how many cool, amazing people are out there who are doing something like this. So if I was to ask you what Escalon Fit does, what do you guys do? What would you say? Just, and he's like, open your chest. It's not, not a trick question, kind of. Not a trick question, but what do you guys do? Just kind of call it out. Wellness. Wellness, what else? Trends and fitness. Fitness, what else? <laughs> what, would, what would people know it as? A gym. gym. Gym, okay, gym, what else? Spa. When we were going, when we were going around the, the horn and you were introducing yourself, you would say your name, you'd say, I'm a, or I do this, or, so what do you, what do, you do? Salon. 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 What do we do? Help people. Help people. What do we do? All things. How do you call it? What do you? How do you describe it? I do this. I do One that. One stop shop. Yeah. <laughs> what do you say? Pilates. And Pilates. Everything. What else? <laughs> Skincare. What else? Training. This is the easy part. I thought Sauna. it was. This is the easy part. Huh? Nutrition. Nutrition. What do we do? Sauna. 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 What do we do? Fitness. Fitness. What else? Waxing. Waxing. What else? Massage. 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 Yoga. Yoga. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Stuff like that, right? Right? Yes. Okay. Here's the challenge. Nobody really wants those things in itself. They want what those things are, those activities enable them to do and or feel, right? Yes. So you already beat me to the punch, but it's to make a point, is when we've helped people, and I know by the nature of who you are, where you are, who you're associated with, you help people every single day, right? Whether you get paid for it or not, whether it's in your areas of expertise or not. So how do people feel after they've gotten from where they started to where they are now. How do they feel? Better. They feel better. Rejuvenated. Strong. Rejuvenated. Strong. Healthy. Amazing. Healthier. Right? Pretty. Pretty. Loved. And when you feel pretty and when you feel loved, it changes everything. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure what you're saying when you're saying what you're saying. All I'm saying, I never said that before. <laughs> All I'm saying is, that's what we have to help people understand: is we're just taking them from where they are to where they want to go, even if they don't know they want to go there yet, right? Because we encounter people and help people who don't even understand or believe that it's possible for them. They may have seen all these success stories, all of these before and after stuff, and they say, awesome, wow, I could never do that. 
I wish that was me. I wish I could do this. I wish I was all kind of stuff, right? So it's all about the connection. So why am I dragging you through all this stuff? I thought we were here to talk about discovering your passion. Yeah. Because when you truly understand how you're helping people and you're able to articulate that in some type of a message or a purpose and you start sharing that with people, they'll really understand that, okay, I never thought about Pilates before for me. I've never thought about, I've heard about all these stuff that people do with yoga for other people. I didn't realize that'll actually help me feel better. That'll actually help me have more energy. That'll en enable me to do more things for myself, for my business, for my passion, for my family, and this is just a vehicle to help me get there. Cool. I'll ride for a while. So, we appreciate our customers, right? We call them customers, we call them clients. What do you call them these days? Clients. 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 Yeah, members. Yeah. Members, clients, value-added business partners, however you want to put it. Friends. friends, that's even better. We appreciate our friends, right? Right? Yes. The thing about appreciate, appreciate, as I think I learned, is a verb. That means you have to actually do something. So here's the exciting part. There's something called Econ 101. I literally invented it last night. <laughs> I've learned about it in different ways. It's been called different things, but this is the first time I've, I've literally written down Econ 2021 and how I'll explain it to you. Whether you've been in the game, whatever you call the game, for a year, who was the year person? It was a two-year person too, right? Excellent. Or who had the big number? 17? 20? 22. 22. Just getting started. <laughs> Just getting started. Right? Right? Yeah. I want you to think about every single person who you've ever helped in the general area of what you're doing. And you were helping people long before you got paid for it, right? Right? Typically. I want you to think about all those people. It's a lot of people. Isn't it? It's a lot of people. A room full. Oh, it's a stadium full for some people. I want you to think about all those people. Maybe it was some family. Maybe it was some friends. Maybe it was some neighbors. Maybe it was some people you just met. Maybe it was some referrals. And if you were going to start taking notes, this might be a time. You don't have to. But if you were, I want you to think about all the people who you've helped. Who have I helped? That's a good question to write down. Who have I helped ever? Ever. And I want you to think about the people who did a trial but didn't pick up on the trial for a reason. The people who said they were interested in possibly having you help them and then they never, they, it's a cool term now, they ghosted you. <laughs> back in the day we didn't have that term we just said they never called us back but now we have a term for it, it's awesome those people the people who you knew you could help but for whatever reason that conversation never happened and their situation never improved go figure, they never got on anybody, anybody's bus and they're still where they are awesome, we can still help them all those people, you think about all those people? You helped them once, you helped them for a certain period of time, you never helped them. They said that they were gonna start and sign up. Like today, today's the day, I got my check, I'm on my way. You never hear from them again, those people. Yeah. yeah. What percent of the people that all those people, let's add some more people. How about the people who know what you do or in proximity that you can actually help them but for whatever reason, whatever reason, you haven't had even the conversation where you could possibly help them. Some of those people exist too, right? Yeah. Take all those people and answer to yourself now, what percentage of those people, how about the people who you were helping way back in the old days? I mean like a million years ago, like January 2020. 
All those people. What about the people who are going to the people who are no longer in business? Add those people to the list. They had somebody who they trusted and they were helping them. And because of circumstances, that business went away. Did those people still have the same needs? Did they have someone to go to anymore? Think about those people too, okay? All those people are in the circle, are in the pot. What percent of those people are we helping right now? This is the interactive part. What percent? <laughs> Wild guess. What's your number saying? Five. Five percent. What number? I would say a hundred percent because they do what they do and they want to go somewhere else. Out of all those people, I mean, we still have some people who are who are our clients, who are our friends, who are our customers, right? So maybe five percent. What percent are we helping right now? And we're getting paid for it right now. What percent? Like one percent. Maybe two. Do you know how exciting that is? <laughs> that, that should be the exciting part. As whatever you call where we are now in our businesses, I mean, we had teams together, things are opening up, we're doing things in person and all that kind of good stuff, and out of all of those people who we've helped before, who said they were gonna allow us to help them, who were having somebody else help them, and those, those people are no longer doing in business. Out of all those people, according to you, we're only helping about one to five to 10%. Do you know how exciting that is? Am I the only excited about that? <laughs> <laughs> what, what are those, let's say we had a circle, and let's say we had a little pie chart, and we had the five, so we can even see it. Let's say 10% even though it's not 10%, right? Nowhere near 10% that we're actually helping right now, right? Not yet. But if we had like the 10%, what's that rest of the space? Possibility. Possibility, right? What's the rest of that space? This is who we're helping. This is who we could help. What is that other space? Prospects. Prospects, Prospects. what'd you say? Opportunity. Close. Whose opportunity? Whose opportunity? Ours, if you see it, and if you claim it. Who wants to claim it? <laughs> see, I come up here and it seems like I'm talking to you, but a lot of times I'm talking to me, and that's how I get more excited than anybody in the room. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, are you kidding me? Isn't that exciting? Aren't you excited? Yeah? Okay, just, all right, back to this. Customer appreciation. And I'm, I'm sure you're already doing this, but since appreciate is a verb, and the verb means it's action, you have to be doing something. And I'm sure I can just tell you're already doing this, but how are we showing our appreciation for all those people who have allowed us to help them. By having this weekend. By having this weekend, absolutely. Are they, as leaders of this volunteer army, nobody here is an employee, I'm not an employee, I've been an employee for 17 years, right? So, as leaders of this volunteer army, is somebody showing their appreciation to you for being part of the team? Yes, right? And are we doing the same thing for the people out there who have trusted us at any point in time? Are we doing that? Yes. Yeah, of course we are. How are we doing that? Showing up. We're showing up. Being prepared. Being prepared. How else are we showing it? Telling We're appreciative. Telling, telling them. Telling. How are we telling it to them? How are we doing that? Thank them for coming. How do we thank them, by the way? Do we call them up? Do we send them a direct message? Are we emailing them? Normally. <laughs> but it's been a minute since we've seen a lot of people. Um, this is like the interactive part. What are we doing? What have we done? Calling. Calling, right? 
If you were to take a Texting. pie, if we were to take a pie chart of all the people who we have helped, which means all the people who have allowed us to help them, and all the people who maybe woulda, coulda, shoulda, but we still care for them, whether or not they allow us to help them in the future or not, paying for our proxy services or not, out of all those people, how many have we actually reached out to recently to say, hey, how you doing? By the way, thank you. I know it's been a while. I hope you're doing well. But remember when you allowed me to help you back then? So many things were going on. I didn't take the time to say thank you. For that, I apologize. But by the way, I appreciate you. How many of us are doing that? How do you do that? Well, when I teach at Eskimo on 5th, it's 5 and 6 a.m. in the morning. Mm -hmm. Just the mere fact that people got out of bed to come to my class that early in the morning is yeah. appreciative. Yeah. They could have picked any gym. Any gym. They chose that gym. Yeah. To get up that early and get it done. Uh -huh. So I try to thank them every morning. Thank you for getting out of bed. Thank uh -huh. you for showing up. You know, those are the hardest parts. Uh -huh. And then thank you for working your butt off and, and getting here and doing it, you know. Because without them, where would I be? Yeah. I'd still be at home in bed too. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind, I like going. I'm there, I'm there for it. How are we thanking them? Text message. How so, give me an example. Um, I guess just checking in, seeing how they're doing, letting yeah. them know that we're back to you know full service. How's everything going? No pressure, you don't have to be uh -huh. here, you know, that kind of stuff. There's an emoji. Yeah. It says, I appreciate you. <laughs> do, you, <laughs> do, you do, you, do you include that entire message in the same initial communication? The what same text? The first text they send out says all that. I do, because I'm new at this. Okay. So thank you okay. for coming. So that's awesome, especially compared to nothing. But I want you to have a scenario. And the scenario is, hey, how you doing? Haven't heard from you for a while. I've been thinking about you. How you doing? Mm -hmm. By the way, our gym is open, and we'd love to have you come back and come and check out the services. And we're here from this to this. You can call me anytime. Send. That's one message. That's awesome, by the way, compared to nothing. Here's another scenario. Hey. I was thinking about you. Hope you're doing well. Send. What's the difference? You're not trying to push your business. You really truly care about how they're doing. Mm -hmm. Aside from if they're going to come to your class or not. Uh huh. How's Sally? How's your son Jared? How's whatever? And leave it open ended so they can respond back like, I'm great. And by the way, is the gym open? Maybe they're going to ask you. Not that the in intent wasn't there from the beginning. But I also feel like uh -huh. them coming, that's when they have their time one-on-one. -on -one yeah. Rather than going through a test. Yeah. Like I yeah. feel like them knowing we're back and them showing up, then you get to see eye to eye and have the conversation uh -huh. with the person rather than like, hey, how's it going? Oh, good, I'm doing this. I had a baby, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Oh, the gym's open. Uh -huh. Where I feel like in person, we would have had that Absolutely. More Kind of what, what's the punchline? What, what, am I, what's the, what, what message am I... Reaching out? Caring. 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 There's a difference between caring and caring. Genuine. Yeah. And Authentic. Being, just splitting up. I, I, I don't call myself the master at much. I'm working on the master happiness, but not yet. I'm working, I'm working toward that. But I'm really good at the connection piece. And all you have to do is separate it out just a step because who knows what's going on in their life and it could be anything, right? And if I go all the way into whatever I'm selling, whatever, as, mu as much as my product or service can help them, if I go all the way there and they say, yeah, as a matter of fact, by the way, this is what happened, now how do we feel? So all the recommendation is, is first of all, all these people out there, that's the opportunity to make the, to make the connection on what we're really good at. It's just making that connection, showing how, figuring out how we can help them and help them, right? So just spread out just a little bit. 
me and my, my, my new best friend, um, I got all these names up here, Phoebe, when I had my first conversations to figure out that I was going to be able to come here, we started texting back and forth, right? How did that, how did that feel when we were texting back and forth? I was texting back with somebody. It text, it was me. Yeah. It felt um, like an obligation. It felt like a chore. It's a chore. Uh-huh. It's a chore. Yeah. It was a chore. It was something I had to figure out. Yeah. And when I was sending my messages, did I do something different than what most people send? Yeah. <laughs> Your pictures? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like, do you Photoshop yourself in front of all that wild stuff? No, that's real stuff. I don't. Oh, yeah. I don't. I'm not. I'm not good at Photoshop. They're all just yeah. actual places I happen to yeah. go, and I'm always on the lookout for. Well, I'll, I'll show you to you later. Yeah. But did it? Was it different than if I just sent a message? Absolutely. Yeah. It was memorable. Yeah. Yeah. I always send a picture with my text message, just showing stuff. All right. All right. Back to the script. <laughs> so. It's all about the connection. Let me see. How's your I time? didn't feel the connection until we spoke on the phone. I guess that's my point. Yeah. When we were texting, uh -huh. it feels like a, yeah. it feels yeah. Like yeah. a job. Yeah. But then when you actually uh -huh. speak to someone, uh -huh. I business is done on the phone, that's my opinion. I do not like texting. Uh -huh. Yeah. But I, it is a good tool to reach out and start the conversation. Yeah. And then I like to give it the phone. All right. How's my time? You good. Cool. It's All right. 30. You got 30 minutes. Cool. It's just getting started. It's just getting started. All right. <laughs> you, have to, you have to lay the foundation. Okay. So far, has this been beneficial for you in any way? Yes. Yes? yes? yes. yes. How so? It's given me a direction to go towards. What, were, what kind of are your halftime takeaways? Because I'd love to know because I can guess. But what are your kind of halftime takeaways so far? What have you learned or were reminded on what this is all about? Be okay if people don't want to get on your bus. It's okay. Yeah. You're passionate about it, but they awesome. might not be passionate about it. If they want to get on? Awesome. If they don't want to get on? Awesome. It's all good. I'm just looking for people to help. That was a tough piece because typically, for whatever reason, the people who we want to help the most are oftentimes the least likely to allow us to help them. You want it more than they want it. Yeah. yeah. It's not even for you, it's for them. Guess what that is? Awesome. <laughs> right? But it is our responsibility to reach out and build that relationship of credibility and trust so they can have the conversation and share with us where they're going so that we can share with them how we've helped others and how we might be able to help them and then say, hey, next up. We're leaving. You wanna hop on? If you do, great. If you don't, great. I'll be back around. Ask some more people to help. And it doesn't matter if you don't know those people yet because the whole purpose was to help somebody, right? Mm -hmm. We wanna help those people close to us, closest to us, but they won't always allow us, especially in the beginning. What else do you, you think? I, well, I loved, uh, Zig Ziglar had a quote, of, mm -hmm. how do you get what you want? Yeah. Help enough people get what they want. Yeah. This is a, a wonderful example. Yeah. What else? I think the reminder of there's an abundance of opportunity out there. Mm -hmm. It was a really good reminder to hear. There's so many people out there. Like, I really truly feel, and I said this to all my partners this year, this year is like gonna be huge for us because we're coming off of something that was crazy, right? For everybody in the entire world. And we're still here, and there is like an abundance of opportunity. I just truly, in my heart, heart feel like we are going all the way to the top. This hill. Is it is so exciting how many people need us and who don't have anybody yet. Yet. Why? They don't know who we are yet. They don't know how, they don't even know we exist yet. They don't know how we've helped others yet. 
They don't know how we might be able to help them yet until we, and this is a great tee up for what's happening after lunch, get on their radar so they can see and they can, oh, okay. Now, it's not about all of a sudden throwing up over everybody and just promote, 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 promote. All they have to do is just see who we are, how we've helped others, how we might be able to help them and say, hey, let's have a conversation, see if I might be able to help you. I don't know. I'm not sure if I'll be able to help you. All I know is I've helped these people get to where you are, to where you say you want to go, and I've helped them. Maybe we can have a conversation to see if I might be able to help you. I don't know. And if you do, awesome. If you don't, awesome. It's all good. What's the difference? Just how we think and how we're able to have those conversations. Make sense? Awesome. <laughs> On a scale of one to 10, I think was the first question I asked you. The most excited that you were, the most believing that you were, whether the result had manifested in the physical yet didn't matter, that feeling. Where were you during the lowest time during these last 15, 18 months, how many months it's been? And where are you right now and where can we go? That's the exciting part. Now they want excited? <laughs> you excited, right? <laughs> because Here's a good one. I should have people just call something out. I guess I ask a lot of trick questions. Do I? Kind of? Sort of I think I've asked. You're not sure. You, you, you get to a point where you ask so many questions that people are afraid to answer because they know it's a trick. But it's kind of a fun <laughs> trick that everybody can benefit from. And because this is a safe environment, no one feels bad. So here's another trick question. Give it, let you know. How many members? are on your sales and marketing team. You do have a team. When we started off, we were a power, we were a team of one. How many people are on your team that you can like, rely on helping you build your business? What are you talking about? It's me, right? How many? One? Three? 350. 350. How many? Just off the top of your head. 30. 30. How many? What? <laughs> so, no idea. Exactly. If I don't understand the question, I guess that you could rely like, on how many it's yourself, like the team, how many it's people, people like are in the show. Like, however you, whatever, whatever you think is, <laughs> and, no and, and, and there's no, there's no wrong answer. Yeah. There's no wrong answer. For me, it's three hundred fifty. What's the okay. question? Okay. Or on my marketing team. How many? Your marketing team? How many people are currently? And currently means you know they exist and they're actually doing something for you. Are on your sales and marketing team. Every single client that leaves that my chair. And at least, and the people sitting yeah. here and the ones of our team yeah. that aren't here. Yeah. And Her hair. Yeah. yeah. So every that, client. That, that, every client. First of all, that gets back to one of the original points was this is a team. One of the reasons, possibly one of the biggest reasons, why some of us are still here in existence as a business is because we were part of a team and we had somebody reaching out to us we had somebody willing to take our call we had some success stories happening even through all the challenges we had all these exciting ideas how to leverage the partnership all that kind of stuff right right yeah yeah so here's the punchline every single person who you've ever helped or who knows an example of how you help somebody could be part of your sales and marketing team if we knew that and somehow leveraged it. And one of the best reasons why I like to record is because I've never said that before. And if I didn't record it, I'd probably forget exactly how I said it. And I'm almost forgetting what I just said. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> so, that's how the brain works, right? <laughs> We're talking top of mind. Something brilliant comes out. If we don't capture it or capture it, it goes away. You say, man, that was a good idea. What did I just think? <laughs> so sales and marketing. The whole point is 
we have the opportunity, even if we just utilize the friends and family and business partners in this room to explode more than where we, what we've done up to this point, if we actually took advantage of it. Because I don't know about you, but if this is my area of expertise, maybe it's yoga, maybe it's Pilates, maybe it's healthcare, maybe, maybe it's uh, skincare, maybe it's this, that, maybe it's gym, maybe it's the whole piece. If I do this lane and I encounter somebody and that person doesn't need what I have to provide right then, but they know somebody else who does, or they know somebody else who could use your services or your services or your services, and we had a radar at all times, just imagine how many referrals and introductions and tests and trial or whatever we call those type of things we could do if we all of a sudden realize that first and foremost, this is your sales and marketing team, right? Yeah. Yeah. What if we really took advantage of that? Wouldn't that be exciting? Steven, what does it have to do with this? It has to do with your passion because when you get excited about what's possible, when you have a, a mindset on, okay, this is where I'm going. This is where I've been. This is where I've helped others go. I see somebody who looks like they want to, looks like they could benefit from going there, have said to somebody or to me that they want to go there, but they don't know that I exist yet. But now they know who I am. They start seeing some success stories of how I've helped others. They're comfortable enough to have a conversation on how I might be able to help you. All of a sudden, this gets exciting. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> because whether it's the power of events, and I heard you very briefly talk about the power of events, mm -hmm. that let's just say there's huge opportunity for take more advantage of, of leveraging those, right? Mm -hmm. Demand generation events of getting people just to know who we are, how we've helped others, how we might be able to help them and say, hey. Because if they don't know who we are, game over. It's like a tip for the afternoon session. Is the train, that person not here yet, right? No, she's not here. Let her know I did a great job. <laughs> <laughs> don't know who she is, have a general idea what she's gonna cover, but this is what it's all about, the new age, right? People have to know who we are. People have to know where we're going, how we've helped others, how we might be able to help them, and then say, hey, you wanna get on the bus? And if you do, awesome. If you don't, awesome. I'm going. I'll be back around after I have all these other people who said they want my help. So, appreciation. Showing people how much we appreciate them. We could do it when they come in for their session, awesome. But there's a big difference of doing, and we can do that, we can do it and say, hey, I really appreciate you. By the way, we're doing a promotion. Don't do the by the, by the ways, all in the one communication, separate those. Don't by the way, you know what by the way means? Hey, haven't talked to you for a long time, hope you're doing well, how's the family? Great, hey, by the way. We're just, we're open, we got, a new sh we got a new stuff going on, we got a promotion, we want you to come by. You basically said all that stuff in the beginning was really just to tee them up to sell them yes. something, right? Yeah. It all. Yeah. We yeah. don't do that. We, I used to do it, so I'm not saying I've never done it, but there's a huge difference, right? Let's not buy the way them anymore. Like crystals, she gave all of her clients little candles for Christmas, that's the little Yeah, <laughs> send. Just send. I call it layering a conversation. Layer, I, I think that's original. I call it layering a conversation. All it means is don't tell them everything you want to tell them and ask them in one communication. The first communication is really just to get on the radar and say, hey, remember me? How you doing? Send. Don't all that other stuff, send. Because if they raise their hand above the radar, 
hey, how you doing? I was thinking about you. Awesome. Now we can have a conversation because you would have the world's greatest communication in whatever form, whether it's face to face when you're helping them out or whether it's in an email or whether it's in a text or whether it's in a voicemail or whether it's in a video mail, you're doing all of those things, right? Whether it's a generic message to the world, which is basically emotionless, but it's better than nothing. You can do it all at one time or you can layer it out and really see who pops ahead of the radar. That's someone I can have a conversation with. Everybody else, they're dealing with life, right? So I keep getting back to this one because I really want to make my point. We have all these people who have trusted us, even if we did it for free, who have trusted us with their time and their trust to help them get from where they are to where they say they want to go or where we help them understand and believe they can go. And we appreciate them. I know we appreciate them by the fact that you're here, by the fact of the group that you're in, by the amazing things I've heard about you and the things I've seen about you, of what you put out there into the world. But just because we appreciate them doesn't count unless we actually let them know that we appreciate them. So out of all the people who we've actually helped, who've allowed us to help them, how many times we've reached out just to say, hi, just say, thanks, just say, how you doing? Out of 100%, what percent might that number be? Don't answer. The best of the best, by her track record of success, has just said, not many. That should be exciting. What, 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 what's a buzzword these days? This is a safe environment, right? I've said it. It's a safe environment because we can, with honesty, say, wow, I appreciate these people, I really do. But when was the last time I actually said it? outside of the by the way stuff. By the way, we're open, outstanding. Do you have any idea what's, been, what, what's happened in their life these last 12, 14, 18 months? Outside of the challenges of the world, whatever has been happening, there was an election in there, by the way. All that kind of stuff going on, all the stuff. Guess what was happening before that? Life. Guess what's still happening now as we come out of it? Life. It got multiplied by chaos and suffering and all that stuff. When was the last time we said, hey, I was thinking about you. Hope you're doing well. Does it have to be on the phone? Send. It can be how you want it. I feel like we do that every time we see our clients. Yeah. yeah. Or like you every three weeks. What, every every six weeks. Awesome start. Like, but does yeah. it have to be via? No. Phone? It can be whatever you want it to be. I mean, I feel like mm -hmm. the least yeah. the hair side of it. I can every I, appointment we can pick up where we left off. Yeah. And how are you doing? Yeah. You know. That's awesome. I'm not taking away from what you're doing right now. All I'm saying is, what's the power of us doing this the way we've always done it? When they come in to allow us to help them, pay for our services, they're happy. We're happy. What's the difference between doing that in between and saying, hey, I was thinking about you. Hope you're doing well. Send. Whether it's a text, whether it's a, a text with a picture, whatever picture, it could just be your smiling face. There's, there's, just, there's a different feeling when you see a text message than when you see a text message and some type of a quote. There's a difference between sending a text message with a quote than sending a text message with a smiling face. There's a difference between a text message with a smiling face and sending a short video. Every single one of you, whether it's an iPhone or an Android or whatever you use, have a smartphone and you can take a video of five to 10 seconds saying, hey, I was just thinking about you. Look where I am, can you believe this? Oh, I'm so excited about what I just, what I just was reminded of. I'm gonna call you next week, send. 
You could do that. I'd be out here and I'm going to be out here before I leave. Taking pictures is just doing this and that. All of, and then, so what do we have? Off the top of my head, we have nothing. That's an option. How's that going? There's nothing. There's a text message. There's a text message with the photo or some words. There's a text message with our photo with the smiling face. There's a video message, right? There's a call that leaves a message. There's a knock, 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 or a visit or a hug. There's a letter. It doesn't matter as long as it's something. Here's, here's what I do. And what's that have to do with that? Everything. Because when you know you have a passion to do something, you go through all of the effort and expense and time and sacrifice and loneliness to be able to do it well and professionally, and you start doing it, sometimes you lose connection to the fun and the excitement and the business opportunity to where you were at the highest level of your excitement. One of the first questions I asked you, right? Remember that time at the very beginning where you were just so fired up to go out there and help some people? And then life just started and circumstances, all that kind of stuff, right? And then the world turns upside down and then all this stuff happens and then don't forget there's still life to, to deal with. Family and spouses and health and financial situations and the economy and all that kind of stuff, right? And at the end of the day, there is a purpose that we were put here to achieve before we leave. Whatever you believe, whatever you believe, there has to be a reason why we're here. There has to be. I, that's something I do believe. There has to be a reason that before I check out in the physical, there has to be something I can do that I was put here to do that is my purpose that's why I'm here. So if someone asked you, if they never asked you before, whether it was you or somebody else, and said, what is the purpose of my life? It'd be kind of cool to have an answer, wouldn't it? And not only have an answer for you, but have an answer for everybody else so that when you're driving through life, having interactions, looking for people to help, they know where you're going so that they can decide on whether or not they'll allow you to help them get there or not. You have about 10. Awesome, right on time. <laughs> Just let me know. So far, so good? So far, so good. Is this being helpful? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to ask you a question. This is really about the days and a half worth of stuff. <laughs> All right. Two questions for you. Now this is a this is the transparency, the honesty, the vulnerability side. I know the answer, but I have to ask you. Do you truly believe in your heart and soul, no matter what you do? Do you truly believe that you have the ability to help people? Yes, yes or no? Yes. 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 Absolutely. I love it when people answer a question and they believe in their answer. We've done it before we ask a question and say, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. There, was, there was no doubt in my mind that you have a 100% belief that you're helping people, right? Yes. You believe. It's, it's not even a believing, it's more of an understanding. There's actually a, a higher level above belief because one's belief can be shaken by circumstances, right? Mm -hmm. By somebody who, for whatever reason, you trust or you love or you whatever you want there, whatever, and they disappoint you. Has that ever happened to anybody other than me? Yeah. yeah. So, but uh, for me, above belief is knowledge. Wherever you are, because when you know what you know, you know how you can help people. You know how you can help others. You know for a fact you can help this person, especially if you already care about them. And then it's just going to be up to them to decide whether or not they'll allow you to help them or not. But it's up to us to put our head above the radar and develop some communication, some people skills 
to develop a relationship of credibility and trust so they'll actually share with us where they want to go because very few people, if any, have ever actually asked them that question. All of a sudden, this person who has been in my life before or not, who's brand new or not, says, hey, I might be able to help you. I don't know. All I know is I've helped some people. You look like you're going someplace. Where are you going? I might be able to help you. And if you allow me to help you, that would be cool. If not, that's cool too. So I should have, do you know? Do you understand? Do you, do you know like you know your own name that you have the ability to help every single person who will allow you to help them? Do you know that? Yes or no? Yes? Yes. yes. That's a cool place to start. That's the trunk of your tree. You can't shake a tree. You can have a branch fall off. You can have a leaf fall off. A little bit of rain, right? The economy, the weather, things are getting good. People are doing things and not doing things. So you can have the, the belief or understanding of a leaf. How's that going? Those are the first people. Were, those people quit back in January of last year <laughs> before it all went crazy, right? When someone went boo. <laughs> right? You, you're going to have to believe on the understanding of, of a branch. But even during those times, if the storm comes, then it can get broken off. Or you can have the belief and understanding of the trunk of the tree. This is a, we haven't had a conversation, this is a trunk of the tree type of a weekend. There is nobody, no matter where you were in the beginning, because whether you have one year or two years or however many years of experience, because you're part of this team, together everyone achieves more. Because you're part of a team, you're, the trunk of your tree is so strong that nobody can stop you. You get that, right? Oh, yeah. Nobody. Except you. Nobody can stop you. Isn't that amazing? You may not believe this. I'll be 60 years old in November. I have good genes. 1961. Good genes, good living. You stick around for a while. I've seen a few things, despite how young I might look. As, I, as my blah, blah, blah introduction. Been a few places, done a few things, all that kind of great stuff. Even though I was born in the 60s, literally 1961, and my father, who's kicking the stream at 89, by the way, we've had track record means I probably have at least 30 more years to go. We've had, I've had grandparents who've lived over 100, so I'm just getting started. On, in November, I'm gonna celebrate the beginning of chapter three. Right, just getting started. So why I tell you this? I told you this because I'm excited. Nobody can shake my tree. Nobody. Used to be all the time. Someone said, boo, I'd run away. Someone would say, I'm going to let you help me. I'm ready. Here, I'm, I'm going I'm, I'm to bring my check. You never hear from them again. It happens. Guess what happened? Life. Out of all the people in our profession, health and wellness, let's just say helping people, out of all the people, they don't have business partners, family members, a team like this. That's why this group is better positioned than any group that I know of to take advantage of what we talked about at the very beginning. Some of us are really excited. <laughs> right? Yeah. Let's go. Are you kidding me? Let's, I mean, let's go. It's a two part question. Do you believe or do you understand on how you have the ability to help people? I know the answer is yes because you already answered it. It's part of it. Okay. Do you care? Yes. Prove it. You care by putting yourself out there. You care by getting your nose bloody. You care by putting your hand up and saying, hey, how you doing? How are things going? If there was anything you could achieve, 
with your overall, let's just say, vibration and look or, or health. Where'd you want to go? I don't even know if I could do it. What if you could? If you could feel better, if you could look better, if you could weigh less, if you could just have that energy that you had back in the day, I wish you, you had. If you could do that, I don't know if I can even, I don't know if it's possible. I don't even know if I can be the person to help you. But if, if somebody could help you, where would you want to go? What would you want to be able to do? How would you want to be able to feel? When you, when you can, in a short period of time, build some relationship of credibility and trust and ask this person a simple question, hey, if you could go anywhere, where would you want to go? How would you want to feel? If they trusted you, would they answer the question? Yeah, Probably, so. right? Yeah. yeah, if they trusted you. What, regardless of how long you have known each other, if you built a relationship of credibility and trust and said, hey, where do you want to go? If you go anywhere, I don't know if you can go there. I don't know if I can help you or take you there. Or maybe I can introduce you to somebody who could help you there. In this lane, this person can help you in that lane. It's pretty cool. If they shared that with you, do you care enough to let them know? Do you? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So am I perfectly teeing up the afternoon as if we had a conversation <laughs> and I never and I and we didn't have this conversation? I haven't spoken to this person. I just know their name. I know the title of their session. But is this making sense? What does this have to do with that? Everything. I don't really think I helped you find your passion. I would have re maybe renamed it, but it's cool to maybe rediscover. You do it by yeah. looking inside and saying, asking, why am I here? What do I want to, what, what do I want to achieve? Who do I want to help? Regardless of whether or not I know what they look like yet. And am I willing and able, because I know that I can help them, I know it. It's, it's higher than belief, because belief can be shaken by circumstances, by reality, by family, right? Mm -hmm. I guess I'm just talking to myself. Yeah, so you can, <laughs> <laughs> the belief, so do you believe, do you care, and if you care, do you care enough to put yourself out there and allow people to say, no, I'm good. How much do you cost? I can do that on YouTube for free. Okay, awesome, awesome. We love them and we hope they're able to achieve their goals by doing this. If they could have done that already, they probably would have, but hey, that's not our job to convince them. We're not in the convincing business anymore if we were ever in it. Sift and sort. Sift and sort. There are people who are desperately looking for us. True or false? Yes. yes. Whether or not it's just to feel better about yourself because of how someone has been able to transform your look. Right? They're looking for us. They're searching for us. Some people are praying for us. And here we are in this beautiful place in the middle of, of all this beauty. And most of those people don't know we exist yet. What happens when they do? We're gonna be really busy. <laughs> oh yeah. We're gonna have, we're gonna have the problems like some of us have had in the past where I don't know how I'm gonna schedule all this stuff. I'm gonna have to we're going to own the whole Main Street. Don't say that. Don't say that, right? But the problems that we want to have, right? Yeah, good problem. All right. Five minutes? How much yeah, time do I have? Not even, I have no idea how much I covered. Has today, our short time together, been beneficial for you at any, for any, any, any yeah. purpose? Yes. Yes? So first and foremost, thank your hosts mm -hmm. for inviting me. We thank Maureen, who may see this little clip part. Thanks for connecting us, because now we're lifelong friends. And with your permission, lifelong friends. So yes. it was beneficial, right? Yes. 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 All right. How so? How did whatever I do, and one of the reasons why I'm recording is I need to go back and see what I did because I have no idea. <laughs> and you think I'm kidding, but I'm not. Because as I think I was explaining, we have kind of these 
out-of-body experiences when we're actually in it, helping them. We know we help them, and we don't remember exactly how we did it, right? So I really want to know, and it helps kind of reinforce it and help the people who brought me in here to realize that there was a good decision. How did I help you? What did I teach you? What did I remind you of? And I really want to know. Yes. May I help you even a little bit more right now? Yes. What you said was awesome. It was all the intent of being positive. You used some words that were limiting. Okay. The words that you used were limiting was, I can't remember you said it, I blanked it out so quickly. I, what did, what did you say in the very beginning, do you remember? I'm independent and I don't like to ask for help. Do me a favor, either, never say that again, Ever, ever. <laughs> That's one option. You have two options. One option is never, ever, 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 say ever, 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 ever say that you don't like to ask for help. Or at least put it in the past tense. I used to never ask for help. I used to never like that. So the, the goal is only speak positive all the time, period, regardless of the situation. Don't get me started on happiness. I could do a whole thing and just happiness and gratitude. That's another time, another place. When you're talking about things, when you're talking especially about yourself, always be positive. Because you believe yourself when you believe anybody else, and you're with you all the time, and you can be your biggest critic as long as you're your biggest fan. You can be your biggest critic as long as you're your biggest fan. Never say it again, okay? Until you build up that muscle, put it in the past tense. You used to not ask for help, but now you realize all the help you have. Who in this room, if you asked for, if she asked for help, you would say, yeah, what do you need? Raise your hand. <laughs> Just, it's like, Stephen, I'm not, right? I mean, come on. Don't call Kelsey. <laughs> Because we're here. So, awesome. Final two minutes. How else has this helped you? What did I remind you? What did I teach you? We Anyone? focused. Mm -hmm. huh? A little bit more driven towards the path. We yeah. focused. Yeah. Connection. Yeah. With people, our job is more than just providing a service, but like, I think people are looking for connection and to be reminded. Now more than ever, right? Now more than ever. And whatever we do, is the vehicle to get them there. They may not even know they want to get there yet because they don't believe it's possible for them yet. But once they meet us and we say, hey, what type of things, if you go anywhere, where do you want to go? If you could look anywhere, how do you want to look? If you want to feel, if there's any way you could feel, how do you want to feel? I don't know if I can help you. All I know is I've helped others. I know some amazing people who might be able to help you if I can. Where would you like to, they'll tell you. That's the coolest part. They'll tell you. They really will. What else? These ladies have been so awesome. Kept us connected. Done a lot of what you yeah. already suggested. Yeah. And we did her um, uh, videos uh -huh. to keep us motivated. Uh, Megan was putting classes online. Courtney especially. I mean, just out of this world. This weekend for me is to reinforce to them how amazing they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where's the tissue? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, wow. <laughs> what are the other people? My time. So my time for train. now. Yeah. My my time for now is up. It's been fun. Thank you. I'm Thanks excited you. for you. you. Yes. They've invited me to lunch, so with your permission, I'll stick around. Feel free to ask me questions mm -hmm. and. I didn't put my name anywhere. You can feel free to reach out oh, and yeah, say hi. I'm so time. excited. Thanks. What was your last name? Stephen. Stephen V is in Victor Richardson. So, Stephen with a V or Stephen with a PH? PH, thank you for asking. Do it. I spell it properly. <laughs> so, with that, I have no idea what time it is, but my time is up. Thank you so much. Thank you. Here's a, the final thing. Final thing. I know that it's.
I know that it might sound strange coming from someone who was a complete stranger an hour and a half ago. I believe in you. Okay? Okay? Okay. No, really. Especially you. <laughs> how? She's how? Blue. And the team. You can tell. No name badges. No titles. You can tell, right? You can. You can tell. You can tell the the the, the shoulders of a of a leader. I've never said that before. You can tell, and you can tell if you know what to look for and you look into their eyes just for an, an extra beat on what they've kind of been through and how they have sacrificed and how hard they've worked and how much they care and how much they love you and how excited they are for their for your future. Whether or not um, they can actually get you all the way to the destination because we can't do the work for you. I similarly lead a volunteer army where anybody can drop out at, at the drop of a hat or whatever challenge someone says boo a situation goes that and all of a sudden they're gone and someone who you know you can change their life isn't willing and able to just allow you to help them and all we can do is pray for them and hope they find somebody who can help them and maybe they come back and allow us to continue to help them on you can just tell we kind of have this connection even though we've only spoken a few times on the phone so one of my goals was for us as a team to show each and every one of us our love and support and appreciation for you. But if someone hasn't said it recently, I believe in you. You can do it. Let's go. Let's go.